I made a ring light to improve the quality of the lighting while recording these videos. I made it for under $20, mostly from pieces of scrap I had lying around. Let's see how I did it. While my initial plan was to use some polystyrene, I very quickly realized that would just be a mess. I had some old hardboard lying around from some Swedish furniture that I disassembled, so I decided to use this for the backing board. If you don't have hardboard, some boxes or packaging material, any cardboard that you have, would also work. You could layer this up in a few more layers than two, and it would probably give it a lot of extra strength. Here I used a circle cutter, which is mostly meant for paper and card, uh, to cut circles in the hardboard. It took quite a lot of work, you had to repeat the cut several times, but it works pretty well. I do highly recommend cutting with the painted side up, otherwise you will get some tear out, because this is a thin laminate film, which kind of sticks to the surface. If you cut it the other way, it'll tear away because it will be the last layer cut through. I decided to use two layers. Once they're both cut out, I realized I needed to cut some holes in the center. Using the circle cutter again at a smaller diameter, I just repeated the process. Initially, I didn't stick things down with the clamps. It took me a while to realize that that was a really good idea. And of course, sand. You've got to sand everything. I glued these two pieces together and left them to dry for a while. Once the glue was dry, it was time to put the foil on the outside. I used some spray adhesive and just some standard kitchen foil. I then pressed the foil down into the spray adhesive and tried to squeeze out any of the bends or folds. It wasn't really critical because we're going to cover it in lights anyway, but this did actually appease my OCD. I used a box cutter just to cut out the edges of the foil, make sure everything's nice and clean. My glue scraper came in handy here, just to push the foil down and make sure it's nice and flat. After digging out these LED strips, I realized I had already cut off a piece, so I needed to solder them back together. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at soldering, so you kind of get to watch me struggle here. The LED strips here cost me about 13 euro. So not the cheapest, you can definitely get cheaper, but definitely not expensive. And of course you have to test it works. These are self-adhesive LED strips. So from here I just started peeling off the backing and sticking it to the board in a spiral. This took really long, like I was pulling my hair out by the end of this. So this is a very quick edit of the laborious process of sticking LED strips to foil. I also made sure to test them every once in a while. So you see me occasionally stopping and plugging the LED strips back in. That's because I was bending the LED strips and I wanted to make sure I didn't break anything along the way. If I did, I might have needed to resolder something. And of course, I had to make sure it makes me look fabulous. To diffuse the light, I decided to use a sheet of baking paper. 
This is a bit of an odd thing, but it is a really good light diffuser, and by default it's heat resistant. Before moving on, I decided to hot glue down the LED strips. The adhesive backing never works entirely well, and there's certain little bent bits which I would prefer to have an extra insulation layer. To raise up the diffusion layer, I found some scrap wood which I cut off into small pieces with my saw here. I then hot glued these small pieces down onto the sheet just to raise up the diffusion layer. Hot glue is your friend in projects like this. After giving a quick test, I decided to hot glue the baking sheet down onto the little risers. This created a firm grip to just kind of hold it in place, but make sure it's lifted off the LEDs. Heat isn't really a problem with this baking sheet, thankfully, but it's still nice to have a little bit of room between the base and the diffusion material. This also creates slightly nicer diffusion. The further away it is, the more room you give for the LEDs to dissipate. I could have even added a second diffusion layer, but one is good enough for my purposes. Then I cut around the baking sheet to make it nice and round with some edges which I turned into little tabs. I then folded these tabs over and hot glued them onto the back of the ring. Once they're hot glued in place, we're basically done here. There is one very important lesson to learn about hot glue. It's hot. If you put your fingertips straight in hot glue, they will burn. I went on through the pain of my fingertip blisters and finished up the hot gluing of the outside ring and then repeated the process for the inside of the ring. In spite of the rough ride, I felt I still deserved to rock out a bit over here. My plan is to mount this on my camera that I film with. So I 3D printed this little hot shoe bracket to mount it on. And there you have it, a ring light. This in total probably cost me about 15 euro uh, if I didn't have the hardboard lying around, maybe a little bit more, but well worth it. As you can see, the quality of the lighting is pretty good. Nice and consistent and smooth grading all over. Let me know if you like this project. Remember to like and subscribe and leave some comments down below. See you next time.